to him again. He's got it. His three. They pop him again. Oh, again, his three. George Gerben at 33 and a quarter. And Clay Thompson has 50 and 37 and a quarter. Clay Thompson, I'm going to repeat that. 37 and a quarter. Remember this historic 37 point in a single quarter performance of Clay Thompson? Damn, I really miss Clay doing this. And I bet you do too. There are only a few shooters in the history of the NBA better than Clay Thompson. But the problem recently is that this certainly isn't the same Clay Thompson we watched years ago. Jackson Davis did well just to catch that. Clay's got to beat the shot clock buzzer and Trace Jackson Davis getting a rest. Clay Thompson. Leapers like to leap, and Jones. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. A handful of seasons ago, Clay was one of the best players in the NBA. He was consistently an all star and was one of the most mercurial scorers in the entire league. In one game, he could have 10 points but explode for 50 in the next game because of his incredible shooting stroke. He made a career out of being able to shoot the ball better than anyone not named Stephen Curry. However, when he was hot, he was the best shooter in the entire game. No one could defend Thompson whenever he had the hot hand. Drafted 11th overall in 2011 by the Golden State Warriors as part of the team's new era, Clay quickly found a place on the team's starting lineup. The Warriors valued him for his ability to move without the ball, get to his spot, and shoot the ball incredibly well. His tandem with Steph Curry, who was also making a name for himself as one of the best shooters in the NBA, became known as the Splash Brothers. As time progressed, Thompson grew and developed with the entire Warriors franchise to become one of its steadiest players. Steve Kerr's arrival as the head coach during the 2014-15 season unleashed him as the ultimate off-ball player. From then on, Clay became the second most important player on that Warriors team. Kerr implemented a system that relied on heavy ball and people movement. Players consistently pass the ball around to find the best available shot while setting screens to free shooters up. With Draymond Green setting off ball screens and becoming a great passer, Thompson only needed to move without the ball, spot up, and cut to get himself open. He made use of one of the purest jump shots the league has ever seen. Clay's shooting form is textbook. The way he sets his feet up, squares his shoulders, releases high above his head, and completes the entire shot with a follow follow through is a form that coaches would teach any young player. Arguably, no one in the history of the league has a better shooting form than Thompson. He made use of that form to deliver four championships to the Bay Area while making it to the All-Star Game five straight times. During his peak, Clay was arguably the most dangerous player off the ball. His best seasons were when KD was on the Warriors because KD and Curry were attracting so much attention. Knowing that he could always move without the ball and spot up for an open shot, he was able to hit an NBA record of 14 three-pointers in a single game. No player has broken that record ever since he posted it in October 2018. Whenever he had the hot hand, he was the most unstoppable shooter in the world. Tragedy, however, struck Thompson's career during the 2019 NBA Finals, when he suffered a knee injury that kept him out an entire season. He recovered in time to join training camp in 2020, but an Achilles injury made him miss an entire season once again. Thompson missed two straight seasons, and that's an eternity for a player who lives and breathes basketball. Clay made a successful return during the 2021-22 season. While he started things slow, he proved that he still had that shooting stroke that made him so dangerous. But what became clear was that he was no longer the same player. He still averaged good numbers of 20.4 points while helping the Warriors win the 2022 NBA championship. But his overall efficiency took a hit when he averaged 42.9% from the field and what was then a career low of 38.5% from the three-point line. Thompson's lower efficiency during his comeback 
season was indicative of two things. First, he was rusty from sitting out two full seasons. And two, he was getting older and no longer had the same quickness and explosiveness he once had. He was never the fastest and most athletic player in the league, but Thompson's athleticism could be seen in how he could run around screens all day and find an open shot for a jumper. He also had a quick and explosive explosive first step that allowed him to hit mid-range jumpers off the dribble. And he was athletic enough to finish strong near the basket after a cut. But age and injury robbed him of his athletic abilities. He still had that great shooting stroke, but was no longer as steady as he used to be. During the 2022-23 season, he seemed to have a renaissance year when he averaged 22 points on 41.2% from the three-point line. But it all went downhill from there, especially during the 2023-24 season. Thompson's struggles this season are well documented. Earlier this year, there were moments where he could not hit any of his shots. This is not the same Klay Thompson we were used to watching during the golden years of the Warriors. He has been bricking wide open three-pointers created by solid off-ball screening. The Warriors are still doing a good job of creating open shots for him, but there has been a lot of times wherein he just couldn't buy a basket. In the recent game against Atlanta Hawks on February 3, 2024, he shot 2 of 13 from the three-point area. Most of those shots were wide open opportunities, but for some reason, he just couldn't hit them. There were also times when it became clear that he was forcing the issue. He was trying to create something out of nothing by pulling up for a contested mid-range shot. In the past, he hardly ever needed to dribble the ball to get himself going. But this season, he has been trying to create a lot of shots off the dribble, which isn't his major strength as a shooter. It has been proven that Thompson's performances have been barometers of the team's success. In the middle of December 2023, he had a five-game run wherein he averaged 24 points .8 points while hitting 46.3% of his three-pointers. Coincidentally, the Warriors won all of those games. But whenever he was struggling, the Warriors struggled as well. One of the theories discussed about Clay's shooting woes and how he was forcing the issue a lot of times was related to his contract situation. He's in the last year of his huge contract. The only way for him to secure another lucrative multi-year deal is to play like an all-star. But he hasn't been playing like one. What's even worse is that he is trying to become an all-star once more even though he can't play like one anymore. At times, Kerr decided to bench him to give minutes to younger guys who were hitting their shots and not forcing the issue. But whenever he did that, Clay showed negativity from the bench and affected the morale of the entire team. Kerr eventually had to confront him about his negativity and how it was affecting the way the Warriors played. But there were no improvements as far as Thompson's shooting was concerned. He still wasn't happy about how he was getting benched in the fourth quarter of close games. After going for 8 points on 0 out of 3 from the 3 point line in a win over the Brooklyn Nets on February 5, 2024, he was on the bench during the fourth quarter, and he looked sad and negative on the bench. And during the post-game interview, David Aldridge summed that post-game situation up when he said that Clay had already felt that his status as that dude was already done. It was sad seeing the former All-Star slowly accepting the mortality of his status as a basketball star. Candace Parker chimed in on the same situation perfectly when she said that Clay was already in a situation wherein his mind is still at the point where he thinks he can cook everyone in the league, but his body he just could not. In his mind, he thinks he can still deliver all-star numbers on a winning team. But the sad truth is that his body has already deteriorated due to age and injuries. He can't be what he used to be, and he has to accept that harsh truth. Clay has likely started to accept the reality that he is no longer the guy. This may have affected his mentality and confidence as a shooter because he has already begun swallowing the bitter pill that Father Time gave him. So what does he need to do? He has to find the perfect balance between knowing what his body can do at this point in his career and having the confidence to deliver whenever his team needs the old Clay Thompson back. Ray Allen was once the guy before he transitioned into a pure catch and shoot player. Clay could take that route, but there's no guarantee that he would still get the same minutes and money that he used to be getting during his younger years. Accepting a smaller role is key to his career moving forward.
forward. It may be true that this is not the same Clay Thompson we saw exploding for 60 points on 11 dribbles years ago, but he is still historically one of the greatest shooters to ever do it. Not a lot of players in his situation can get to say that they were able to make the all-star team five times and win four championships. Despite his current struggles, Clay can still look back on his career and say that he did a pretty solid job, worthy of the Hall of Fame.